Hi everyone, welcome back and thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. It's Sandra here and I'm back with another Wednesday's Wahala. This is where I attempt to do a makeup look while talking about a real life DV situation. Last week I talked about Tatiana Spitzner. This was a pretty young lady from Brazil who was deleted by her husband on his birthday. So they had gone for a birthday dinner and one thing led to another and he just deleted this pretty young girl if you have not watched that video i'm going to link it in the, in the description box or you can go into my playlist and it's going to be there with several other videos for today's video i have something planned already i've been working on a case but this incident happened just a couple of days ago I think on Thursday or Friday right as we were getting into the weekend this incident happened and I want to say that as of today I'm pretty sure that everybody and their grandma has heard about this story everybody has heard about Osinachi if you have not heard about it please just Google ask Google and you'll be surprised at what you see because this is blowing up okay this woman unexpectedly lost her life to DV. Um, it is alleged, of course, that it is her husband that treated her. But for today, I don't want to dwell too much on her case. I'm not going to go deep into her story because, like I said, it's so much information out there if you want to know more about it. But today, I really want to focus on why women stay in dv relationships that's really what i want to base um, my discussion on today why do women stay because according to what we've been hearing this osinachi has been going through this for a very very long time and she stayed for whatever reason until her demise so i want us to focus on that today for today's video, I'm going to be using this. This is a gift that I received from Beauty Bay. I did a purchase from them and I'm not, I can't remember how I qualified to get this free gift. It was either I reached a certain threshold, I don't, I don't know, or maybe because I bought one of the new palettes. I'm not sure, but it was free and I love it. Okay, this is the Disney color collection, the mini palette is a pack of three okay I hope the color is showing pretty well and I've been eyeing them for a while but of course it wasn't really speaking much to me I wasn't gonna buy it you know when I saw it I was like hmm, I really don't want it but because it's free I want it now <laughs> so this is some pretty cute colors pretty cute is what it looks like and I don't know about my lighting I don't know if you can see the colors well so this is the first one it's more like a pastel color and this is called Dumbo this one is called the Jungle Book this is what the Jungle Book looks like oops And this one is called Alice in Wonderland. This is what Alice in Wonderland looks like. I'll be playing with this one today, Alice in Wonderland. And I'm gonna try to get something that will match my outfit. I always try that, but at the end, I just go way off and just do whatever crazy thing that I do, so. <laughs> so let's get into this look and talk about today's Wahala. So a quick background for those who do not know Sister Os Os for those who do not know Osinachi, she was a Nigerian gospel singer. And I will admit that until her demise, I really didn't put a face to her song. Okay, she's well known for her song Ekueme. I don't know anybody who hasn't heard of Ekueme. 
especially if you are a Christian and you're into worship songs and all of that. I don't know anyone that hasn't heard of that lady. And I'm going to admit that until her demise, I never put a face to that song. Like she's not one of the artists like Agatha Moses. Uh -huh. Agatha Moses, I would see her and, and point her out that that's Agatha Moses. But for this lady, I really never knew her like that. And I understand that she has other gospel music that she sings, which some people know about. I really do not know them. I just know Ekoeme. But that song, there's something about that song, Ekoeme. There's something about that song that is so powerful. Okay? That song, every time I I hear that song, especially when it's played like at a funeral or at a burial or wakekeeping. Mm, it just brings out something in you. She had a powerful, powerful, powerful angelic voice. So she was married to her husband and they had four children. And it's alleged that the husband used to really, really maltreat her. Her sister gave an interview right after her demise, I think on Saturday or so, and she kind of gave an insight on their relationship, her relationship with her husband. And for me, that didn't really it came off more like this guy was, I want to say he hated that woman, okay? Hate is a very strong word, but I feel like that's the best way I can describe their relationship after hearing what the sister had to say about them. I feel like he hated her. And so you would ask the question, if he hated her, then why did he marry her? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I can't tell. I mean, people know why they do what they do. Okay. But I don't think that anybody that loves anyone, if you love somebody, if you as much as like, let me don't even go to love. If you as, as much as like someone, you will not treat them the way that this man treated his wife. It is said that at some event or some point, he spat at her. Do you know what it means to spit on someone? Like this person disgusts you. I, I think of spitting at feces. Okay, you spit at crap. If I enter a, a house or a room and there's a foul smell, I can't even swallow my spit. You keep it in your mouth because it's disgusting. And when I go out, I spit out. That's what it means for you to spit on someone. Like, you can treat a woman that you sleep with, a woman that you lay down with, you cannot treat her like that. You cannot treat anybody that you like. Again, I'm not going to say love because love is another big word that I cannot use. I cannot put this man and love in the same sentence, no. So you cannot treat someone that you like like that, not to talk of someone that you love. So that was their story according to Osinachi's sister but on Friday or Thursday I think this young woman lost her life and it is said that her husband beat her so much like he hit her in the chest and she fell and went into a coma and she was in a coma for a few days 
about four to five days until she died. When this sister passed, several people started coming out and saying that she had been going through DV for a very, very long time. And she had actually confided in a few people. And there's a few people that have admitted that they did talk to her. They did advise her to leave. But for whatever reason, she decided to stay. And she stayed until this happened. So, like I said in the intro, today I really want to focus on why people decide to stay because it's something that I think I have said this before that I really don't understand it I really don't get it why people stay in such relationships but from research from listening to other people that have been in such situations I've come up with some few reasons why I think that women stay in such situations. I think that one of the reasons why women stay in such relationships, one of the first reasons for the women that have children, they'll tell you, I'm staying for my children. Like, what am I going to do? How am I going to take care of these children? I'm staying for the kids. I don't want to have all my kids with different men or I want my kids to grow up with their father. You know, I'm staying for the sake of the children. For me, I always say that if you want to stay for the children, you want to be able to give those children your all. You want to be able to give those children 100% of you. But you cannot give those children 100% when you are not mentally fit or mentally capable of doing that. You have to be able to take care of yourself first before you can take care of those children. Remember when you're in the plane, right? And the air hostess, they come, <coughs> the air hostess come up and they're giving instructions on how to put on the vest if in case of an emergency. What do they say? They always say that put on your mask first before you put on your child's mask, before you put on your husband's mask, your sister, your father, whoever you are with in that plane, you want to save yourself first. It's not selfish. There's nothing wrong in you loving yourself. And I'm going to talk more about this, but I feel like it all boils down to this, loving yourself a lot of us would think that it's selfish to love yourself it's it's not because you don't expect anybody to love you if you don't love yourself or you don't expect anybody to love you more than you love yourself so if you cannot if you are not mentally fit psychologically fit physically fit there's nothing you can do for those children and trust me, the children, they see what's going on. They know what's going on. They feel the tension. In Usinache's case even, I think one of the, the posts wrote that the husband would tie her up and have her children beat on her. So you, you think that that situation right there is good for the kids? It's not. It's, it's no good for the kids. On the flip side, is destroying the kids. What are you teaching your daughter? She has a young girl. I think she has like three boys and a girl. What are you teaching your girl? You're telling her that it is okay, that that type of behavior it is it's okay and she should stay there. You're teaching your son that it is okay. That's how they should treat their wives. You're setting a bad precedent for those kids. Don't feel like you're doing them any good. Don't you ever, ever, ever say you're staying for the kids. If you want to save those kids, you want anything good for those kids, 
you need to go. You need to go. And a lot of times they say, I'm not going to leave my children. I can't leave my children. Sometimes you need to leave them so that you can take care of yourself, get back in your right self, regain yourself, and then come back for the kids and fight for them later. So that's the first point. The second reason why I feel like women are staying in such relationships, especially as an African woman. And I think this is one of the main things that is, is being discussed a lot. Okay. As when, when it comes to this particular case of Osinachi's case, right? There's a lot of talk about culture, uh, African culture. So Osinachi is Nigerian. I'm from Cameroon and there's a lot of a lot of their culture that is similar to ours, okay? A lot of things that they do that we do too. And I feel like as an African woman, there's a lot of pressure for us to get married, okay? There's a lot of pressure for you to be a wife and to stay or remain a wife, okay? And I feel a lot of that comes from our people, and also even from the women themselves, okay? Most of us are ashamed of what other women are going to say mostly. It's mostly the women, okay? You get into a fight with a woman and the first thing she's insulting you about is that you're not married, okay? Are you even married? Look at you. Go, I'm, at least I'm in my husband's house. You go and be in your husband's house before you come talk to me. Okay, those type of pressures. And sometimes for an African woman, the pressure is too much that they feel like the pain of being shamed weighs more than the pain of being battered. Okay, I'm going to put it that way. So the pain of being shamed in the society, in the community, it's, it weighs more on them than the pain of being beaten in your house. So I'm going to stay there. I'm going to do what I got to do. I have to make this work. This is my husband. I have to stay. I have to be married. I have to be missing somebody. If not, the, the society is going to shame me. The community is going to shame me. And every time that there is a broken marriage, the, the burden is more on the woman. It's always the woman's fault that the marriage didn't work. Okay? It's always what did she do? You couldn't keep a husband. You couldn't keep your home. You weren't taking care of him. You weren't giving him as much as he wanted. That's why he went out. It's always, always, always that pressure and that shame for the woman, especially the African woman. So I think that that's one of the reasons why our women decide to stay in such DV relationships. Another thing that is being talked about a lot, especially with Osinachi's case again, is the church, the doctrine that we are getting from the church. And in my opinion, okay, nobody has to agree with me. I feel like there's a difference between Christianity and African Christianity, okay? There's a difference between Christianity in general and African Christianity. That is my opinion. And I feel like in African Christianity, we take this phrase, till death do us part. We take it very literally. Okay, when it comes to marriage, we take that phrase till they do us part very, very literally. So there is nothing, absolutely nothing that should take you out of that marriage unless you're in the coffin. Okay, the only thing that should separate you is death, no matter what. So that's why I say we African uh, uh, African Christianity, we take that phrase very literally. And from the stories that we've been hearing about this case, there's a lot of people that said that 
they advised her, they advised the late sister, and she insisted that God hates divorce, that her husband's going to change, it's her cross to bear, it's her marriage, she has to do what she has to do to make it work. People talked to her, people advised her to leave, but she was determined to stay. Because what would her image be like in the church? She is this minister in the church. How is it going to come off if she leaves her husband? Like nobody really cares what's going on in that marriage. Nobody really cares how many times they, they, they blow your eye or they, they, they pluck out your teeth. That's your problem. That's your business. Do what you got to do, but stay there. And unless you're getting out of a body bag, you have no right, no business getting out. That's another reason why I feel like some women stay in such relationships. Another reason why a lot of women stay in DV relationships, and this one kind of boils, it kind of ties up with the first reason about the kids, like what are you going to do about the kids? That is financial stability, okay? Why the women are worried about their children, worried about their children growing up with their father, there's also that concern about how they're going to take care of the children if they decide to leave, okay? And one of the things I've, I've, I've heard in these past few days from the speakers that have been talking about this issue a lot of them advise, and this is very, very important, that the, the woman, okay, you have to be financially independent, okay? You don't have to get to the point where you are a millionaire or something like that, but you want to have a little bit, something doing for yourself. Because it's not only about you leaving the marriage, but what if something happens? You never know. What if something happens to your husband? You're home, you're not doing anything, you don't have any income. What are you going to do? How are you going to take care of the children? So one reason, if you ask a woman that is in a DV relationship, she's going to say, how do I take care of the children? I don't have any money. I don't have anything doing. He doesn't let me work. He doesn't let me do anything, okay? If you're married to someone that wouldn't let you work and he's not providing for you, he's not giving you anything because if he at least is, is taking care of you, okay, he's giving you money to take care of yourself, we are women, we are very resourceful. If he gives you 500 francs, to go do grocery, to go buy stuff for the house, okay? You should be able to keep 50 francs on the, on the side. And those 50 francs, they add up, okay? So if he's not giving you that to take care of yourself and he's not letting you go out to go and work and make some money to take care of yourself, he's a wizard. You don't want to stay with that type of man, okay? So let's... Be mindful of that, women. Let us be financially independent so that in situations where there's DV and you feel like you are not safe, you and your children are not safe, you can go. And you know that you have the small that you can take care of yourself. Another reason why women stay in DV relationships, and this one... This reason also kind of ties up with the culture is because a lot of parents, again, because of culture, they do not welcome the children back, okay? You hear some women say, I cannot go back home. Where am I going to go? My dad is not going to let me. And the day that you, go, you get married, the father will tell you, okay, as you're going, that's it. You know, don't come back to this house. You're coming, maybe you come for holidays and stuff, but you're not coming back to my house. Stay in your marriage. It kind of ties down with the culture, okay? Some parents will 
would rather have their child come back in a casket than have them leave their marriage and disgrace the family, okay, spoil the family name. They'll say things like, oh, they, no one has ever divorced in the, in the family. You cannot be the one that's starting it and stuff like that. So that's that. And another reason which I think this is another African reason is that there's not a, a lot of resources for women that are in DV relationships. Okay. In the United States, for example, they have safe houses. They have hotlines that you can call and you have help. You have the police, for example, that will come out and relieve you. You have the police that will come out and save you, at least for the meantime. If there's a DV situation in the house and you call the police, the first thing they're doing is taking the man out of that situation. They're taking the man out of that house to, to, to save the, the woman and the children, okay? What happens in the African community is that when you call the police, the police, if they come or if they have a number, if you can call them and they come out, they will tell you that this is a domestic situation. This is a husband and wife issue and they are not getting involved. Okay, first that. And then even if they, they manage to, by some miracle, you even get out of that house, where are you going to go? Where are you going to go? There is no support. There's no support. Like those safe houses where you can put yourself there for a while while you get on your feet and stuff like that. They, they don't have those facilities. Am I saying that women don't stay in different situations in the U.S. or in, de in developed countries because they have those facilities? No. Because even in the U.S., even in the abroad, you still have women that will stay in those relationships. But at least if we have those facilities, if we have those safe houses and we have that support, it could encourage some of our African women to know that, okay, at least if I'm leaving this house, maybe I cannot go back to my father's house because my father will not accept me but I can go to this support house and they will support me and they will help me get back on my feet. So I feel like that's um, one of the other reasons why. And in this um, case in particular, in Osinachi's case, I understand that the Minister of Women's Affairs, I think, has been involved in it. Um, she did go to Osinachi's house to visit her, her kids and we are hoping that this woman didn't lose her life in vain, that something is going to be done moving forward. Because sometimes there's a saying that if you do not learn from others, others will learn from you. Okay, sometimes something like this has to happen for us to learn and for us to be able to, to move forward. Yeah, so that is some of the reasons why most of our women, especially African women, choose to stay in DV relationships. Those are the few that I could come up with. If you know any more reasons, um, you can list them in the description box. But as much as we don't like to admit it, but these DV situations that go bad, that go very, very bad, they happen more often than we know. They happen more often than we can even admit it, okay? Especially in Africa, especially in our African communities. Because like I said earlier, sometimes the police doesn't even get involved because to them it is a domestic situation, it is husband and wife issue, and they'll tell you guys to go, go deal with it. But this one made news. This one made waves. And a lot of people came to know about it because this woman story made waves because she was a celebrity. What about those other women in the villages? Those other women that are not known. Those women that nobody talks about. Those women that have 
passed in DV situations and nobody ever said anything, you know, what about them? So every once in a while when stories come up like this, we're going to be out here. Uh, activists will come out, motivational speakers will come out and we will talk and we will rant and we will sing about why we need to leave and we ask so many questions and we'll talk about it for a week or two and then everybody will go back to their normal lives everything will go back to normal until the next time when we have another situation you know so at some point we have to get to the part where we say okay enough is enough like we don't want to hear this again what should we do? What are we doing? And for me, I don't know what else can be done other than more talking and more sensitization. Because at the end of the day, nobody can force you to do what you don't want to do. Okay? That's my opinion. Nobody can force you. The most we can do is talk. But if you decide to stay, there's really nothing that anybody can do about it. Listening to a Nigerian YouTuber that I follow, Obodo Ibo TV, they call her Auntie B. And she, she was saying that if she was in this situation and it's her sister that was in the DV relationship, she will force the sister to leave. And if the sister refused to leave, she will go get uh, the police or somebody to come arrest her. She will go get boys to come arrest her and take her away from there. After that, after you take her away from there, what next? What's keeping her from going back? Are you going to tie her and lock her up? Because there's something about this thing they call love. They say love is blind. Yeah. <laughs> Although, honestly, I don't know if this is love anymore because I'm not sure how some people define love. I don't know what love is for some people, but you cannot tell me that somebody will be beating on you every day. Every day, somebody will spit on you and you think that they love you. I don't know. Because for me, I feel like I should be able to say, oh, I love this person because, okay, they make me feel good, they treat me right, they make me laugh. But if you are with somebody that keeps making you cry, why do you love them? Is that love? I don't know. I don't know what, what some people call love. I don't know how some people define love. But that's not love for me. So if your sister is in that situation and you get the police or you get some voices in the bushes to come and arrest her and take her home, what's the guarantee that she's not going to go back? My point is that at the end of the day, we can sit here and talk all we want. You can... Talk to the person that's in that situation all you want. You can advise them. You can give them all the support. It doesn't guarantee that they're going to leave. At the end of the day, the only person that can make that decision is you that's in there. Because we always say that, um, what's that saying? That you're the only one, you, you, you wear the shoe so you know where it hurts. We are just outsiders. We are just watching and we don't know. We are not feeling the pain as much as you're feeling it. You're the one that has the swollen eye. You're the one that feels the beating. So you are the only one that really knows how it feels. And you're the only one that can make that decision. All we can do is talk. All we can do is advise. All we can do is encourage. Okay? I think it's, it's about time where 
everybody takes responsibility for their own action. We cannot sit here. We can always sit and say, yes, the church. We can say, oh, the church, oh, her parents, oh, this and all oh, that. On this Osinache's case, I was reading a post where they said it's the son that wrote it about how the dad said that abuse was good, how the dad would beat up the mom and stuff like that. And somebody commented under that post and said, you, you are responsible for your mother's demise. You are responsible for your mother's demise because you did not report it. And again, this is my opinion. Nobody is responsible for her demise, but she herself. Okay. Could some people have contributed? Yes. But she is the only one that is responsible. Because again, this is not something that was out of the blue. This is not something that was out of the blue. This is something that she's been enduring for a very long time. And people talk to her. Leave, leave, leave. Save yourself. At some point, the sister even told her that, come home. This is not a, a divorce, so this is just a separation, you know. Just leave for the meantime so that, you know, you can put yourself together. You know, get yourself back. Get some, get some, some ease. Get some space, you know, so that you shouldn't even cry. At least you shouldn't cry for a little bit because the whole time you're there, you're just crying. So get a break from the cries. And she was like, nope, I'm going to stay. I'll pray for him. So as far as I know, the abused husband doesn't just wake up all of a sudden and just starts abusing. It's something that they, they've been doing even before marriage, okay? And a lot of times the mistake that we make as women is that we think that, okay, if he's abusing you while, he's mar while you're dating, his problem is that you're not married. And that as soon as you get married, things are going to change. And then when you get married, you don't see any changes. Then you say, oh, uh, maybe it's because he doesn't have a child. <laughs> Once you give him a child the child will make him more responsible. He's going to change. And when you get a child, you don't see any changes. I heard somebody say something one time that the only thing, the only thing that you can change on a grown man is diapers. Okay? Is diapers. Other than diapers, there's nothing you can change on that man. I think it's time that our men start calling out the men too, okay? There's a lot of women out there that talk about, like they're out there advising women to leave the shows, like I do my shows and trying to encourage women to leave such abusive relationships. But I feel like it's also time that men start calling out their mates for the things that they do. There's a few men out there that I know. Maybe there's more I don't know about. But I know that people like Pastor Shola, Pastor um, Kingsley, um, Okonko, yeah, Kingsley Okonko, they are very vocal about how men should treat their women in, in marriages. I think more men should do that. More men, while we are advising women not to stay, I feel like more men should be able to call out the men. Because when this happens, they always say um, there is a, a, a bad yam in a pot or soup, something like that. There's always that bad seed, okay? We are not saying that all men are bad. We are not saying that men are, are, are dogs, like generalizing. But then when something like this happens, we tend to generalize. But there are very good men out there. So those good men, it is your responsibility or your place to call out the bad men and say, do not 
do that because that's profiling that's making people profile or that's making people feel like that's what we are about that's not what we are about okay that's not how we treat women but when you do that that's represent that's a representation of us okay i don't know if i'm making any sense you know and i saw that a lot with the will smith case okay for those of you that have been following that case i'm so happy i'm so proud how a lot of men a lot of african-american men in fact i think i saw just one video that in that supported his actions but all the other videos that i saw the african-american men were out there saying that this is not us this is not you, you're not giving a good representation of us African-American men. We don't do violence. We don't do that. That's not how we defend our wives, okay? We don't have to put our hands on anybody to defend anybody at all. So I feel like it's, it's that time where men need to do that. Hey! <laughs> As you can see, I had to change my background, okay? don't don't check it don't check i'm not gonna get into it okay so i'm here with the final look and i'm just gonna say a few words to conclude this video you guys so in the end after all said and done i think that all of this dv issues up and down and i think that all of it still boils down to one thing okay i feel like everything boils down to loving yourself at the end of the day i feel like you have to love yourself know your worth because if you love yourself you're not going to let anybody treat you anyhow you're not going to let anybody just beat you up and mess with you anyhow okay as women, I know that we, are, we take care of ourselves. We are concerned about our physical, how we look physically and, and all of that. You have a pimple, you want to treat it and also why would you let somebody put marks on you? Why would you let somebody give you a wound on your face and, and stuff like that? So, ladies, again... You have the final say. You should make that final decision. Nobody can make it for you. All your family members can do, all your support system can do is advise and talk and advise some more. But you have the final say. I know that it's, it's hard. I know that it's hard. What are people, people going to say? What will people say if I leave this? People are always going to say stuff. People are always going to say, if you leave, they will say. If you stay there, they will still say. Because right now we are still saying, why did you stay? Right now we are saying, rest in peace. So at the end of the day, think about you first. Don't think about people. Because they are not the ones feeling the pain that you're feeling. So that's pretty much all I have for you today, you guys. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you learned one or two things out of this video. Again, we're just going to keep talking and hopefully somebody will listen. Hopefully somebody will be saved. Hopefully one person is going to take action. One person is going to stop tolerating and actually act okay so let me know what you think about our video for today let me know in the comment section what you think about our video and my look this is one of those looks that i just adore i mean sometimes you do a look and you're not really feeling it i am feeling this look i'm in love with it so thank you beauty bay for giving me the free the free palettes <laughs> they're just so cute small cute mini palettes that i love so much yeah so with time we're gonna dig into the rest of them so but for today thank you so so much for watching 
if you're still here till this moment i adore you i love you so so much please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe if you have not already show some love take care of yourselves and each other and i'll see you in my next video bye